This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to get the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top Resume has helped more than 400,000 professionals land more interviews and get hired faster. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. You send your resume out to an employer and you get no response. And it happens again and again and again. What are you doing wrong? Mary Southern is here to talk about why your resume isn't working and what to do about it. She's the founder of Resume Assassin. Mary's company creates resumes that show your unique value and help you win interviews. She joins us from Austin, Texas. Well, Mary, here's where I want to start. How can you be sure that it's your resume that isn't working? You know, it's the top frustration that I hear from the job seekers that I work with. Uh, they come to me and they've typically been firing off resumes to hundreds and sometimes even thousands of employers. And their main concern is I'll apply to this position and receive an automated rejection email. That's one of the first signs that your resume likely didn't make it past what's called an applicant tracking system or sometimes known as the ATS, which is that first automated phase of the hiring process. And so that that's the first sign. Well, we all get those automated messages when we send out applications. Uh, and sometimes, but how can you make sure that it's it's your resume that is the issue and, and not perhaps your qualifications or your cover letter or a competition? What, what are signs sure. that it's the resume that's at fault? Yeah, that that's a great question. And, you know, today, what I would like to to talk about are some really easy and actionable ways that you can implement today to make sure that your resume is optimized for the applicant tracking system. And, you know, essentially, you're creating a resume that's giving yourself the best shot possible of getting those interviews and avoiding those darn uh, automated rejection emails. And I'd be happy to talk about that today. Well, let's dig into that, Mary. So let's, uh, I know you have a list of tips you want to share with our listeners uh, that will help them create resumes that are going to get not only the attention of employers, but uh, get responses. And one of your top tips is you say, uh, People often aren't clear in their resumes about the job that they want. Um, how, uh, tell us more about that, Mary, and, and why it matters and, and why it leads to employers rejecting your resume. Sure. My first tip would be to, to create a strong headline. Now, the headline section will be the, the brief phrase right below your, con- your, ta- your contact information. So it really highlights your value as a candidate. Um, so the headline should reflect your target position, and it also allows you to condense your skills and work experience into more of a concise phrase that you know will really quickly impress the hiring manager. Um, you know, and another really simple tip is you know to not forget to change your headline every single time you apply to a new position, because your main goal here is to make it really abundantly clear to the hiring manager which position you're targeting. So it may be that the the headline reflects the specific target position, or it may be some variation of that. So if you've been a software engineering manager for 15 years, and you want to st- step into a VP of software engineering, perhaps, you know, instead of VP of software engineering as your headline, you might use senior executive software engineering to make it, again, abundantly clear to the hiring manager that that's the position you're targeting. And uh, describe to us what these headlines look like on a resume is because it sounds a bit like the old job objective, but that's not what you're uh, recommending here, is it, Mary? It's not. So the headline would be more reflective of the the title at the top of your resume. So it's the 
it represents the specific position or, or the type of position that you're applying to. Now, what you're referring to would be more of the executive summary, which would be right below the the headline section. And that is a section that's incredibly important as well. And I mean, really, your executive summary should be a, a short par- paragraph at the top of your resume right below that headline. So there, there are numerous options that you can use here too. So you can either write a paragraph that summarizes your skills and experience, or alternatively, what you could do is write three to four really impactful achievements that are highly relevant to the position that you're applying to. So it really, you know, reinforces and clearly communicates the the value that you bring to the target position. Um, so you'll have the headline above followed by that executive summary or those executive statements, the, the, those powerful achievements that show this is what I'm applying to. And this is why I'm a great fit for the position. This is how I could step in and make an immediate impact. And both of those sections can and really should be modified every single time you apply to a position. Um, You know, so I hear of candidates that are just firing off, again, hundreds and hundreds of applications using the exact same resume, and they're not taking the time to modify those sections to really give themselves the best shot possible of effectively moving past all of those HR systems. Why does that make a difference, Mary, customizing your resume for every application? Because I meet candidates, as I'm sure you do, who say, well, it's a numbers game, Mac. Uh, If I send out a thousand resumes, uh, maybe my response rate, um, maybe I only get 10 interviews, but I, I can automate it and that's how it works. What's been your experience, Mary, working with both your clients and employers? Is it a numbers game or does quality trump quantity? Quality trumps quantity every single time, Max. So you really don't want to be spinning your wheels. I mean, it, it, time, time is so important. You know, if you're firing off a thousand applications, a thousand resumes to different positions, and you're only hearing back from a couple of those that would be a, a a huge red flag for me. And I think it, one issue that some of my clients are concerned about when we talk about tailoring their resumes is, you know, the time that it might take to do that. Well, you don't need to take an hour every single time you apply to a position to make some of these changes. You can simply take five to 10 minutes to, you know, create a strong headline that represents the target position make it some adjustments to your executive summary based on the position that you're applying to and even the company that you're targeting. What are their pain points? What are those major achievements and and unique value that you bring to to that position and to that company? And an even easier way to, you know, maybe take five minutes to, to tailor your resume would be to swap out the keywords or the skill section. Um, and yes, you do need a keywords or skill section. That's an incredibly important section. And that one is typically right below the executive summary. And there are lots of different names for this section, but um, it's also the easiest way to increase your chances of moving past that applicant tracking system. So simply pulling keywords, you know, major salient keywords directly from that target job description and sprinkling those in somewhere in your resume. Again, the easiest place being potentially that that keywords or skill section, will, you know, is another way that that can really give your resume the best shot possible of, of getting past the systems. Can you overuse keywords in your resume? Yes, I you certainly can. So, in a, you know, it's one of those things I've had clients that have asked me, oh, what if I use white font and embed keywords somewhere in my resume where the hiring manager can't see? Or what if, you know, I, I copy paste the job description word for word into my resume using white font or, you know, embedding it in my resume to try to trick the system. And it it doesn't work that way. You don't want to oversaturate your resume with keywords or buzzwords. The goal there would be to strategically use keywords, you know, integrate them into, yes, the keywords or skills section, but also the professional experience section with tangible evidence of results with those keywords. 
Um, you know, so kind of moving down into the professional experience section, um, you know, this really shouldn't be a laundry list, you know, of, of your day to day duties, but this is a great chance for you to use those keywords to really, you know, highlight your achievements, the impact of those achievements, and, you know, putting quantifiable, quantifiable numbers to the impact as well. Terrific. We're going to pause right here, Mary, and take a break. Stay with us. When we come back, Mary Southern will continue to share her advice on why your resume isn't working and what to do about it. Are you ready to act on Mary's advice? The experts at Top Resume can help too. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Top Resume will review your resume for free. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. You'll get tips you can use to improve your resume right away. Or you can hire Top Resume to do it for you. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the Maxlist studio. I'm talking with Mary Southern. She's the founder of Resume Assassin. Mary's company creates resumes that show your unique value and help you win interviews. And she joins us from Austin, Texas. Mary, before the break, we were talking about why your resume isn't working and what to do about it. And you walked us through some key sections of a resume, the headline, the summary of experience, uh, skills, and then um, uh, professional experience. And we talked about keywords and how to use them strategically. Uh, uh, I know another reason you've identified in your work that resumes may not be working is that you're not aligning your experience with the position you want. Can you tell us more about what you have in mind here, Mary? Absolutely. Yeah. Y- you know, when when you're approaching resume writing and, you know, the, a big part of what I like to do when I'm writing a resume is, is use storytelling. So, you know, your goal should be to create a really compelling story that shows not only what you've done throughout your career, but even more importantly, you know, how you can step into the position that you're applying to and make that immediate impact. So the professional experience section is a wonderful way to implement that. So like I mentioned previously, you know, the professional experience section really shouldn't be a laundry list of your day-to-day duties. You know, instead, you should really think about including a short paragraph that, you know, describes your role, followed by actionable bullets, highlighting those major achievements. So when you're writing out your major achievements, this is another really great opportunity for you to, you know, really align your background and your impact on your previous companies with the specific position that you're applying to. So when you're writing out your achievements, I recommend that you use the CAR method. And that stands for challenge action results. And when you're writing out your bullet, you should write it in reverse order. So you should start with the results followed by the action. So, you know, achieved $3 million in additional revenue by winning winning two new enterprise accounts um, would, would be a great example of using the car method and then writing it out in reverse because your goal is to show, okay, the action first. So did you increase revenue? Did you improve a process? Did you spearhead a a project or initiative, reduce costs, streamline workflow, Um, everything that shows the value. And then if you can put numbers to that, um, you know, improved operational efficiency, 50% by implementing a system that streamlined workflow across numerous departments. Um, And the more specific you can get, the better with with your achievements. Um, You know, and in terms of achievements, I would really challenge you to start tracking those achievements every single month. 
so that, you know, when it time comes time to updating your resume, you're truly prepared. Um, it, you know, in fact, I've actually started creating my own Word document with a list of achievements. And I mean, you truly would be surprised at how quickly you forget the details of an achievement after it happens. So I, I've kind of gotten into the habit of writing down an achievement right after it happens so that I don't forget the details. But it, you know, if it's easier for you to make a list every single month, you know, I would certainly encourage you to to do that so that, you know, in the end of the year, next year, five years, when you decide to to start your next job search, you're ready to update your resume and you're really making your life a lot easier. How have you helped your clients who may not have kept lists like that go back and document achievements? What has worked for them? Yeah, and that's a great question. And, you know, I encourage my clients to go back and look through performance reviews and really, you know, take time to to think about each individual position and company that they've worked for um, to consider, okay, what what achievements, what was the impact that I made there? And, you know, one you know, I guess one issue that a lot of my clients run into is, well, this isn't necessarily my achievement. This is an achievement that I worked with. You know, I worked collaboratively with several individuals across several departments to to execute this achievement. It wasn't, you know, just something that that I did. Um, but you know, what I always remind my clients is, you know, most achievements, most major things that that you achieve within your company and throughout your career are collaborative. So it's okay to list an achievement similar to that on your resume, even if it's not something that you've done on your own. Um, so, you know, perhaps chatting with colleagues, chatting with uh, old bosses or, or supervisors, and really, um, you know, thinking of different creative and unique ways that you drove change and transformation in the company. You mentioned storytelling uh, a moment ago, the importance of, of telling your career story and your resume. How do you help your clients do that uh, so that they create a resume that is going to get a response? What has worked for them in telling their career stories and their resumes? Yeah. And storytelling, it's, it's so interesting and I, I'm very passionate about it. And you know, for, for those that are both changing careers and those who are looking for either a lateral move or a step up, you know, within the same industry or type of position that they've been in, a lot of or the most effective use of storytelling that I found is really using similar language that's used within the job description to align with your brand, with your brand, with your value proposition. Um, and again, with the way that you're writing all of the, your entire resume from your headline to your executive summary through your professional experience section. So thinking from the eyes of the the hiring manager, okay, what what do they want to see within this specific position? And then pulling out and highlighting those skills, those experiences, and those achievements in a way that's really unique to you. Again and again, you come back to, Mary, the importance of tailoring your resume to the position you want. Uh, I, uh, what would you say to people who are using generic resumes? Stop. <laughs> it's not doing you any justice. Now, 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 let me back up. So, you know, an ATS-friendly resume is what I typically create. So a lot of my clients are applying through company websites. They're applying through LinkedIn or they're applying through other major job boards. And if this if this is the case, that's when it's incredibly important for you to tailor your resume to the specific position. Now, if you are solely working with a recruiter, it's still important that your resume is pretty highly tailored, but the recruiter will be advocating for you. So they've already built the relationship internally with the company that you're targeting. So it's not as important um, to make sure that you're keyword integrating and ATS optimizing if you're only working with a recruiter. 
But the majority of job seekers and the majority of the clients that I work with are open to working with recruiters, but they're typically applying through LinkedIn and other major job boards as well, which is why it's so important that you really learn how to implement some of these strategies to tailor your resume to every single position. Well, it's been a great conversation, Mary. Now, tell us what's next for you. Sure. So I've really been, you know, working on expanding my network on LinkedIn. So I'm always creating new content on LinkedIn and trying to provide the most value and and advice there as possible. Um, You know, and I've also, I've been working with clients, you know, from entry level through the C level. And so I'm continually you know, analyzing current HR processes, analyzing resume writing best practices to make sure that I'm doing everything possible for my clients to win the most interviews as as they possibly can. Well, I know that listeners can learn more about you and your company and your services by visiting your website, resumeassassin.com, and that you also invite listeners to connect with you on LinkedIn. And as always, I hope they'll mention they heard you on find your dream job when they do reach out to you. Now, Mary, given all the great advice you've shared today, what's the one thing you want a listener to remember about why your resume isn't working and what to do about it? Sure. So I, you know, and I want to give a quick example. I, I had a client that came to me after he was laid off. He was applying to numerous positions it was getting no feedback, no interviews. We worked together. We created a very highly tailored resume to the position that he was targeting. And within three weeks, he had 30 interviews and seven job offers at very high profile companies with at least a 25% increase in pay. The main thing that he did was, you know, make sure that his contact information was on point. I, you know, don't use grumpy girl 08 at yahoo.com for your email address. You want to make sure that you're using a professional resume, make sure that your LinkedIn profile brand aligns with the brand of your resume, adjust your headline. You want a strong headline that reflects the position that you're targeting. Your executive summary should also reflect the skills, experiences, and, you know, major achievements that are relevant to the positions that you're targeting. The keyword section is extremely strong and again reflects the target position. And your professional experience focuses on your achievement, you know, the impact, the value, and you know, putting numbers to that and also quantifying the impact to show again how you can step into that individual target position and absolutely make an impact. Make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash newsletters. Again, that's maxlist.org slash newsletters. Next week, our guest will be John Tarnoff. He's a coach, a speaker, and an author who helps mid- and late-career professionals achieve meaningful careers. John's latest book is Boomer Reinvention, How to Create Your Dream Career Over 50. You may hear no or nothing at all from hiring managers when you look for work. And as this happens, it's easy to get discouraged. Join us next Wednesday when John Tarnoff and I talk about how to build confidence in your job search. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job. This show is produced by Max List. Susan thornton Hoff schedules our guests and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislin-Berry Anderson manages our social media. Our sound engineer is Matt Fiorillo. Ryan Morrison at Podfly Productions edits the show. Dawn Mole creates our transcripts, and our music is by Freddie Trujillo. This is Matt Pritchard. See you next week 